Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3 The Ringed City. Uh, to start today, I think we need to clear the air about Lap. Oh, there you are. Perfect timing. You remember that treasure? In the thick of the poison swamp. Well, I fetched it for you. As promised. Oh, there was only a hop and a skip. I needed a rest from old Nan over there. Here. Go ahead. It's yours. Maybe it'll help you with that solemn duty of yours. This really is a dr mangled rem- I think we've heard all that before. I think you all owe Lap a big apology. Because he's a great friend who just wants to help. I saw some comments that were making some very harsh accusations and slurs against Lap, who is just a sweet, gentle amnesia boy. Just the biggest ally you could have. Went into the poison swamp, into the thick of it, past the angels and the bullshit down here, and one of the thralls escaped. And he got a tight night slab for us. What a stand-up gentleman. Uh, so, the Earthman Peak Ruins. Welcome back. There is a covetous demon somewhere in here that's just been chilling out like, We await your return, warrior. I wish, I wish, I wish they had the gonads to have like a covetous demon corpse in here, like Gilligan back in the profane capital. Oh, we got motor along. And um, we see more of those poisonous, uh, bugs. Little termite buddies. Oh, and there is the pillar of light that builds up curse when you're out of line of sight of the angels when they know that you're around. Holy fuck, I love this setting. I love how pretty this is. I'm glad I did this out of combat, because I made the mistake before as well. Now we have a real honest fight with the Herald Knight. We don't get to do the fancy new plunging attack on him this time, so we get to see his full moveset. That's like the logical conclusion of every one of those types of attacks. Every one of those executioner's blades or like Murakumo movesets. Where they two-hand it and they just start slamming it down. Except he does it, uh, in a big flurry. And then he belly flops on you, which you're not looking out for. That hurts a lot. Whew, and then he does that? It's like an E-Honda butt splash. And unfortunately, the Cursed Pillar of Light will not do anything to the Herald Knight. Oh, my timing is so bad with these guys. They're a little bit slow, and I think that's always been the hardest thing to deal with with Souls enemies, is enemies that are too slow. Oh, like that! I was like one frame away from taking that, and it would probably have killed me. They hit like shrucks. So, I would say that this is where things start to pick up. In terms of the difficulty. Ring City gets pretty hard. This is where you would normally pick that Titanite slab up, uh, and there would be this normally alive Herald Knight guarding it. Lap went all the way into the thick of the poison swamp past the angels, past one Herald Knight, killed another one, and got the slab and came back to give it to us. What a goddamn hero he is. Oh, him a big apology, all of you. Shame. Uh, this is where they start to, to coalesce a lot of concepts together to make for a pretty challenging area. Uh, there's a lot going on here. There's this angel sniping at us constantly, and he is, he has such a wide view of the whole zone, of the whole swamp. And they're not stationary turrets either. Uh, they can drift around the arena to get line of sight on you in some spots where you, at first, are safe. Um, we have the angels, we have thralls all over the place to fight when we find cover. We have the poisonous swamp. Uh, this, you have to come up all the way up here to find the body that will kill the angel 
so that you have free reign to actually explore the swamp. What a glorious sight that is to behold, the angel fallen over dead. Oh, it immediately relieves a lot of your tension and stress. It's a great feeling. Because they are formidable. So yeah, you have all of that going on. You have this large open area that you're trying to explore, finding cover, dashing from cover to cover. Having to time those dashes, like the best time to dash, you saw me do it on this tree branch uh, to get up to the next spot, is when they, they eventually get sick of waiting for you to pop out and they cast Curse on you. That's your biggest window to where you won't get hit with the lasers because they have a long recovery animation. I think we can safely skip this Herald Knight. We do get the Herald Curved Sword, too. And you don't, on your first foray into this swamp, you don't know where that root body is that'll kill the angel off. So it's stressful. It's really, really stressful trying to find that. I almost didn't notice there is an item glow here. And even though the, the poison isn't actually all that dangerous, it's adding pressure, it's adding stress. It's compelling you to rush and be hasty and make mistakes. It pressures you. I think this swamp is a, a really well-designed area uh, as far as like inducing stress goes. Because that's the thing about, about Dark Souls. I think the, the skills that Souls games test the most, they aren't necessarily mechanical skills or reflex-based or dexterity or anything. Um, I think they challenge your patience, your decision-making, your concentration, your observation. Uh, stuff like that. So when you have things adding pressure... It influences your composure, it influences your concentration. Uh, Gloves of the, de the Desert Pyromancers who once walked the halls of the Earthen Peak. It said that the thin burgundy cloth breathes with magic. Desert Pyromancers, most of them female, were known for their great fans of flame and enchanting looks, but what is enchanting can also be deadly, especially when clothed in such a luring garb. Ah, uh, you remember the Desert Pyromancers, don't you? Ah, uh, they were a menace all throughout Earthen Peak. Originally, back in Dark Souls 2, we're finding their attire, but we haven't actually seen one of the Pyromancers themselves yet, thankfully. I'm sure, given some time, we will get there. Oh, hell, hell, yes. Uh, up on this giant tree branch, you get the Ring of Favor plus three. Again, it's an indication of where they want you to be in terms of power level. You are not supposed to walk into this DLC too early. Uh, they really do tune it pretty tightly towards a higher level. I think in the press kit they sent out, they recommend like soul level 120 or so, which I, I think that's a tiny bit excessive. But it's certainly in that range of like 90 to 120 that they tune it around. Of course, there's going to be that dude doing like new game plus seven soul level one no blocking no rolling for everything and it's gonna be impressive as hell or, or someone doing it on uh the rock band guitar like like uh like biggie and smalls in ds1 uh but what they generally tune around is 90 to like 120. they expect the average player to be about there uh so without the stress of the on hill compounding on us uh, we're free to look around we've gathered more or less everything there is to get uh, down on the ground floor of the swamp so we can now come up here that thrall should not be able to get up here he might be a little bit of a nuisance ooh mistimed that he was going for the R2 stab as he approached but wow I just ate it here's a problem uh, here's a really big problem. Sometimes those thralls that are flanking the desert sorceress approaching us, 
Uh, sometimes they get way ahead of her, and you can pick them off before she aggroes. But we have found ourselves in a really bad spot. Uh, it didn't hit the second one. She's not get. uh, there's... There goes one. Yeah, as long as we... Okay, we're okay. The fireballs are honestly the least of our problems. She's way more dangerous up close. Holy shit! So she's rocking the the fan of flames, which is a new pyromancy. She's rocking the long range fireballs and a whip, which hurts so badly, especially on counter hits. Uh, but it does, if she swings it vertically like that, it does leave her pretty vulnerable. I don't even mind having traded that much with her. That NPC can fuck your day up. But she does drop the, uh, the flame fan pyromancy. Oh, it's gonna be a fun one finding that. Wish I could add these to storage. Is that it? No, that's fire orb. Shit, no! Ah, uh, there it is. Pyromancer of Zoe, descendant of the desert pyromancers, used repeatedly to brush the fan of flame left and right. Zoe possessed true beauty as did all of the Desert Pyromancers, but hers did not poison, and so she became the unassuming queen of the Feeble Ones. I think this is a really cool new Pyromancy. Uh, and we also got the giant gold decorated curved sword wielded by warriors of the Herald Legion who sought the Dark Soul. Oh, there it is, I'm getting goosebumps. Swords sank into the dark with the Legion where their blades were severely damaged. Uh, so remember back to Dark Souls 2, Mytha's soul, Mytha the Baneful Queen, said that Mytha was so driven to gain the affection of a king that she poisoned herself to attain beauty, and it had monstrous consequences. Oh, I hate this angel so much. This is the one in the fucking whole rain city that sucks. I hate this one. It's such a shitty one to, to approach. Even if you nail it right when its back is turned, it still has so much time to react as you're walking down the branch or running down it. You're good here. It gets another opening somewhere around here-ish. Uh, but you should be okay aside from the fall damage. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a little ugly. Uh, but we want to come down into this crevasse anyway. This crevasse. And follow the route down. Uh, before the Ring City came out, there was a leak via uh, data mining, and they found four souls in the files, uh, which everyone thought corresponded or would correspond to the four bosses of the DLC, uh, the then upcoming DLC. There was ah, here's the body for that angel. Uh, there was the Crimson Bat Soul, the Mother of Dragons, the Snake Soul, and the Ruined Capital King. Uh, some of those souls, I will say, correspond to bosses. Some of them correspond to things that are in the DLC but are not bosses. And some are seemingly absent altogether. Not sure what this route is for other than a really radical view. Just a, a breathtaking vista. Uh, but the, uh, the snake soul caused a lot of speculation about maybe it's about the pus of men, maybe it corresponds to like a primordial servant boss fight, which is really tantalizing. And as everyone figured out the Earthen Peak was going to be a location in the DLC, some people thought that it was a reference to Mytha. Uh, and if the data mine soul corresponds to anything in this DLC, I would have to guess that yeah, it is another Mytha reference. Ah, uh, that's nothing but a divine blessing. You know, we can find some uses for that. How the fuck do I get to that item? Uh, I guess there's a jump I would have to make to get to that. Is that the first overturned uh, windmill tower from the... Like, the very opening of the level before we drop? Uh, I think that it is. I know that item can't be that important. Uh, because I know where all the really important stuff is in here. Oh, what is that? 
It's gotta just be like a soul or something. I'll still go and, and look for a way to get to it. Uh, those circles that you drop into that tell you that it's a safe drop here in the Ring City, uh, those are the same miracle circles that you teleport into uh, when you get teleporting into the Dancer of the Boreal Valley boss fight room by Emma. Now, just like before, when we took that second pass through the first part of the drag heap, uh, we're going to do the same thing now because a couple of items have become a lot easier to acquire now that we've kind of cleared the angel that would have been pecking away at us. Uh, this is how you get up to this item on the tree branch. It's just a little bit of twinkling tight night. Uh, the problem with getting to that while the angel is up is the angel totally is line of sight on you as you uh, get up to the, the ramp onto the branch. Uh, and then this is also obviously a little bit difficult to, uh, whoop, one of them just straight up fell off the cliff. Uh, this is also a little bit tough to get to while the angel is all over your back, breathing down your neck. Uh, the Desert Pyromancer garb. And there's one extra set of things. Uh, normally that's where we would have run in, that's where we saw the angel snipe the thrall. That's where we started our mad dash from cover spot to cover spot. Uh, but if you come a little bit further down, uh, you come to this house with a tight night chunk, and there's also a path along the cliffside. Where we get one of my favorite things in the DLC, which is the giant door shield. This thing is radical. Uh, unusually shaped paired great shields resembling great doors, heirlooms of the night, who was known to uh, as the protector of the meek, yet who failed to protect anyone. This thing requires 45 strength. It seems like a gimmick shield. It is a weapon. It is a proper weapon at that. It's a good one. It's got crazy poise, or I guess for this game it would be hyper armor because poise is some nonsense word in this. Uh, unless they, they actually did finally fix that for real this time. It's got really good moveset, it's got crazy hyper armor. Uh, it's got really good stability. It's it's such a fantastic weapon. But I guess now is where I cut ahead to where I finally figure out how to get to that item. <laughs> oh, I know exactly where that is. It is that, that tower in the beginning. Uh, so it should be right up here, and I can make a jump. No, I don't even have to jump. I can just fall straight in. Ah, uh, it's just a tight night scale. I knew it wasn't important. Uh, now we can go back to the Earthen Peak Ruins, and from there we'll warp back to the Within the Earthen Peak Bonfire, I think it was called. Something goofy like that. Uh, and we have nothing left to do within the Earthen Peak, except go and fight our first boss. Uh, real quick, let's trade out the Silver Knight Shield for uh, the Dragon Crest Shield that I prepared ahead of time for just those couple of extra points of uh, fire resistance. Oh, and a big epic plunging attack. You can see two glowing orange lights. Uh, those lights correspond to the Demon in Pain and the Demon from Below. You're going to want to watch out for those purple clouds uh, and the purple gas that he breathes. Uh, that is toxic. Uh, so the main elements that you're dealing with from these two are fire and toxic. I think this fight is uh, a really interesting duo fight. Because they aren't unique enemies. They technically share one big move set. It's just that they each only have access to half of the move set at a time. So there's always going to be one that's powered up using fire attacks, and the other is always going to be weaker, hanging back, uh, breathing toxic at you. Exploding toxic at that. And they trade back and forth over the course of the fight. Uh, but there's usually this short window where, uh, 
as one of them is getting ready to power down, the other is powering up. And there's this brief little overlap where they're both powered up at the same time. Uh, it's probably the most dangerous point in the fight. But usually it's just one and the other. It's like how in, uh, in the Dark Souls 1 Gargoyles fight, uh, when the second one joins the fray, there's one gargoyle who's always using the full moveset, and the other one is usually just hanging back, breathing fire. Uh, the AI gives you a chance like that. Also, their heads... Uh, they look a lot like the Anorlando uh, bat demons. Oops. Ah, that was unlucky. Rather mistimed on my part. I got the, uh, the, the timing wrong for the first swing and it threw my timing off on the second one. Uh, so I do believe that these guys are really vulnerable to bleed. And since I'm running a luck build with Andre's straight sword, oh, the, you can pile on the damage really hard. Plus, uh, if you attack them hard enough, you get to do a visceral attack on their faces. Oh, let's finish this with a jump. It should be enough. Hell yeah! Style. Now, since I don't want to use an Estus, just because I'm feeling good and I'm feeling swaggy, I want to end this with as much Estus as possible, just because. Fill back up with a Divine Spirit. And it's time for round two. Uh, the Demon Prince takes much less damage. He takes about half as much as either of the two bats before this. Also, this was totally a, a, a cut boss from the base game. Uh, they found the bat demon in the files. It's a lot like how a lot of the um, the DLC from Dark Souls 1 was uh, made up of content that they had to cut out. So the order that you kill the two demons in uh, this is where it gets really cool. Matters. It's an Ornstein Snow situation. Uh, the one you kill last is the one that matters. He will resurrect with a different moveset. And he'll either use, like, a giant tracking meteor and a big floating chaos spell, or the lasers that you saw. Demon from below, second, gets you the lasers, otherwise you get the meteors. Uh, and I think most people find the, the lasers easier to deal with. Even though I think there's a lot of merit to uh, getting the meteors. Because you can fit in so much damage while he's, while he's uh, channeling it. Ah, fuck. Oh, this is a bad time to drink. Yeah. So let's see, what did I do there? Um, that was almost a really perfect fight. I made a timing error followed by, uh, I made actually two or three timing errors followed by a really bad decision. Still can't be too ashamed of that attempt. Oh no, he just had a sliver more this time so I couldn't swag quite as hard. So this is pretty much identical to the first attempt. There is a second one that uh, I may just throw, I might just splice it in for novelty's sake because I got smashed really hard somehow. Proves even with an easy boss you can underestimate them and just get stomped. Really though, aggression is the key. If you are like hyper aggressive with this boss and you never ever give it breathing room, there's nothing it can do to you. Uh, it's got the same bo the problem a lot of bosses have, where if you're between the legs, you're golden. Uh, they they have a really hard time hitting you there. Uh, this boss tries to solve that with a lot of mobility. It can fly back a lot. It can reposition itself really well uh, and kind of slam down to hit you. I need to back up a little. Uh, you'll see a little shockwave when he does the second laser, which he always does, uh, following the zigzagging one. Uh, the shockwave will hurt you a little bit when he does that second laser. That's one of the things that makes this phase so beneficial, the uh, laser version of this phase, is because if you outrun him, if you are that hyper-aggressive, uh, 
you can get him to shoot the laser and you just get unbelievable amounts of time to get your damage in. Plus, you still get to visceral attack him. Uh, he is durable because he's taken half as much damage, but... Oops. Okay, let's not make the same mistake I made last time and just drink in his face right away. Oops. This is what makes the Dragon Crest shield great against him, too. Like, you can barely get chipped out. He has very small amounts of fire chip damage with this shield. It's not the biggest deal in the world if you're not using it. It's just a little bit of extra mitigation. He knocked me down. Uh, so this time we're definitely dodging lasers. Left and to the right. That's not very hard. That is not a hard one to do. And we even managed to get him into the visceral state before the second laser. Uh, despite the fact that this is not the most demanding or challenging boss in the world, I still really like this fight a lot. Fuck, that one's fun. I know some people complain about camera issues with him. Uh, I don't. I think they're a little bit overstated, but yeah, that boss can be a little bit problematic, especially in phase one. Uh, the demons birthed from a common chaos share almost everything between them, even the pride of their prince and his near faded flame, so that the last demon standing may rekindle it. And this is the soul of the demon prince, whereas before. Uh, we started with the demon from below and the demon in pain. So they inherited the demon prince's soul, the demon prince that uh, Lorian slew. It's also fascinating because it implies that the demons link the chaos flame as well. Uh, there's some more here to explore, but we'll get to that next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.